Well, you have already seen the thumbnail for this video, so you know what this is about. This is a welcome to my latest guitar in my collection, the Eastwood Airline 59-2P. 2P refers to the fact that it has two pickups and uh, a 59 model, I guess. This is a guitar that I have coveted for pretty much exactly 20 years now, which is depressing. But uh, ever since I first saw Jack White in the White Stripes using an original one of these, um, which was a, uh, a model made by a company called Airline, uh, but that model of the guitar was called a Jetson. And uh, it was a plastic guitar, basically. I say plastic, it was uh, a rezo glass, they called it. It's basically a type of plastic that's reinforced with glass. So, uh, GRP, basically. Um, glass reinforced plastic. Um, so, a very unusual material for building a guitar, very cheap material, more importantly, for building a guitar. And um, yeah, those guitars command a huge price tag these days, um, and they are not good. So when Eastwood began to make a reissue of sorts of that guitar in, I think it was around the mid, maybe late 2000s, um, I was very, very hyped for picking one up, as uh, as you can imagine. So, this is one of those. I believe it's from 2007, this guitar. Um, made in Korea, which I'm a huge fan of. A lot of my favourite guitars that I've owned have been made in Korea. Um, they make very, very high quality guitars over there, from my experience. And this is definitely no exception. I primarily wanted this guitar because of how it looks, just being honest. Um, and I think you'll agree, it looks pretty special. Um, all white with the black pit guard is not my uh, first choice of colour that they offer. Obviously red and white would have been my first choice. But... I do really love how this looks, and I also quite like the fact that it's not uh, an exact um, clone of the one Jack White used, uh, because in a way it uh, feels a little bit more, I don't know, individual, personal, something like that, I guess. Um, I feel like I can make my own music with this, rather than, if it was red and white, I think I'd be more inclined to just belt out nothing but white stripes all day long, uh, which, don't get me wrong, I have been doing a lot of that with this since I bought it. Um, but yeah, it looks great. Um, I am, I think, the second owner of this guitar, the person I bought it off, uh, I think said in the listing that he had owned it from new. So uh, I am extremely grateful that I got this. I managed to win it for a rather cheap... 460 quid on eBay, and that is a lot less. I would say it's about half as much as what they tend to go for these days. Um, the red and white ones in particular, you just you can't find them. Um, the two pickup red and white versions, especially the DLX, deluxe versions that they do, the more recent um, models have the stripe down the side because the original plastic guitars had a rubber gaiter type of a thing uh, around the edge of the guitar holding the two sides the front and the back together basically so uh, it doesn't it doesn't have that uh, artificial stripe that the newer DLX versions have which is a little bit disappointing but ultimately I don't really care um, obviously these are made of wood, so they're a lot cheaper and stronger and I presume heavier than the uh, original ones. But uh, 
saying that it isn't exactly a heavy guitar at all. I was very surprised actually uh, just how light it is. Most of the weight seems to be in the neck surprisingly. Um, there is a little bit more neck dive from this guitar whilst wearing a strap than I was expecting. Uh, I think partly because of the size of the headstock. Look at the size of this thing. Uh, I do love the headstock on this. This is the uh, uh, what I think is affectionately referred to as the Gumby headstock uh, of the original. Um, I, the original guitars came with, I think, two main uh, headstock designs. And, of course, this is the one that uh, Jack White had on his. So that's why I think this one has, uh, has that style headstock. Uh, it does look better, I think, and it suits the overall appearance of the body as well. How does it play? That is the main question. Um, I was not expecting it to play as well as it does, actually. Um, the neck in particular is astonishing. It's wide and quite thin. I don't know if it's the width of the neck uh, making it feel like it's thinner than it actually is, because that is a thing. Um, but it doesn't seem to be too thick. It's definitely not a baseball bat of a neck. It's uh, a soft C, I think, is what I would probably describe it as. But I'm not 100% sure on that. The bound fretboard feels really nice. The fret work is spot on. There's absolutely no rough edges anywhere. Feels really high end. Uh, like a Gibson, really, is I'd say the closest... Uh, in feel, I would say, that this neck has. Definitely reminds me of some of the uh, early 2000s Gibsons that I've played before, um, which is definitely high praise, I would say. Um, I think it only has 20 frets rather than the 21. 15, 17, 19, 20. So yeah, 20 frets, um, which means that the neck pickup is a little bit further forward this way than on most other guitars that uh, I've come across. But uh, yeah, some, a, a nice range of tones available in this guitar from these uh, two pickups. Quite bright sounding, um, as you'll hear later on. The pickups in the original uh, Jetson guitar they look like humbuckers, but they were actually single coils with uh, humbucker plates over the top to make it look like it was a it was a fancier guitar than it actually was, because I guess in those days the uh, humbucker equipped guitars were fetching more of a premium than the single coil guitars at the time. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I've seen pictures of the uh, the pickups from those guitars. If you flip them over, it's literally just the inside of a metal casing for a humbucker, and then it's just a pick, just a single coil pickup at one end where the uh, where the screws are. So uh, quite interesting, quite funny. This uh, solid metal um, trapeze tailpiece. There's a lot of metal going on there, and I don't know if you can hear if I just pluck. Quite jangly. Um, there's definitely a, a nice uh, array of overtones coming from the ring extra ringing that you get with uh, that much metal at the end of the uh, the bridge. So I do like that quite a lot. Um, the bridge itself, not as much of a fan of that one. It feels like this is the weak link of the whole setup. Um, I'm not a huge fan of these kind of super thin style of tunematic bridges. I don't know if you can see there. It is very thin and there's not a lot of metal in there at all. Um, I prefer a, a much denser tunematic designs. Just because there just seems to me anyway to have a little bit more of a sustain, more of a transference of energy and vibration through to the body when you've got a more sturdy, dense bridge. There also seems to be quite a little bit of buzzing from a couple of the saddles on here as well. So uh, yeah, 
plenty of reasons I think to to swap this out. In fact, I've got one here. Um, this is a, a Wilkinson bridge. These are great. I love these things. They are the probably the best upgrade to any of uh, the cheaper uh, tunematic style bridges that you can put on a guitar. I think. These are uh, very cheap to come by as well. If you just search on eBay for a uh, uh, roller tunematic or roller bridge and just search a lot through eBay, um, you can find these for seven, eight pounds. A bargain, really. So uh, that, I think, will almost definitely be going on here. Um, just double checking, it's the right kind of size. Seems to be. So uh, yeah, that's going to be a modification that I make on this guitar fairly soon, I think. Um, another modification I think that might need to be made is with the tuning pegs, uh, the machine heads, whichever word you prefer to use. Uh, these are, I think, are they Cluson? I'm not sure. I can't remember the name. I think they're Cluson style uh, tuners when they're like this, three in a row. Um, I'm not a fan of uh, that style of tuner anyway, but uh, these in particular do not seem to be the most stable uh, of tuners that I've come across. It might just be the uh, age of them. They might uh, they might just need replacing because of that reason. I don't know. But yeah, it definitely doesn't seem the most stable of uh, tuning guitars that I've had. I also really do not like these mint green uh, tuning pegs, the actual bits on the end. Yeah, I don't like them. I'm sorry if you're a fan, but uh, mint green in general, I'm just not into on guitars. So um, yeah, that's something I think will probably be looked at at some point. Another thing that I was considering doing to this guitar is, although I do like the black on white kind of contrast colour scheme thing that it's got going on. Um, I was wondering about making it, making it a little bit more personal to me and making more of a unique looking version of this guitar. Basically my thought is changing the black pick guard for a white one, uh, changing these black knobs for white knobs, the pickup selector switch, uh, the plate here, changing that for a white one as well. Um, basic, basically going for a completely white out kind of look uh, on this guitar. Um, but with a red knob here. Uh, this is the master volume knob, um, which is quite an interesting addition to have uh, when you've got volume and tone controls for each of the pickups just up here. A little bit in the way. If you're a heavy strummer, that might be uh, awkward. A couple of times I have found myself uh, knocking the, the tone pot in particular on this one. That's a little bit annoying. Um, I might look into putting some kind of foam or some, some kind of uh, um, grommet or something, washer maybe, underneath that just to make it a little bit harder to turn so that I don't knock it. Um, but yeah, thinking about putting a, a red knob here, which I actually ordered the other day and it came this morning. So I've got a, a red sort of Strat style top hat knob there. And just for good measure, I've got a red switch tip as well to uh, maybe put on here. So I'm thinking all white with just two little red accents on there might look really cool. Um, maybe going for a little bit of a bucket head style thing. Um, the main reason for that is because for the past 10 years or so I have had this strap in my possession. I bought this as I said about 10 maybe 11 years ago and uh, it's a proper airline strap that uh, is exactly the same as, as what Jack White used. So I bought this long before I got the guitar uh, fully intending to use it one day. So uh, now that I have this guitar, I can use this strap on it. However, the red and the white strap doesn't really 
go that well with the black and the white guitar. So I'm thinking change the guitar to be white mostly with a couple of smaller accents of red just to tie in with the strap. Um, I will put a mock-up just here of uh, my idea for this. Um, I did also think about adding a red detail around the edge of the pit guard as well. Not sure if I'll do that, I'm not quite 100% sure if I like that look or not, but uh, let me know what you think in the comments, if that's something that you think would look cool, um, or if you think, no, keep it completely stock, it looks amazing as it is, don't touch it. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. So, um, that's pretty much a complete rundown of my thoughts and impressions of this awesome guitar, and uh, I think now it's time to play through some tones. What do you think? I'm going to be using a few pedals just to, shall I say, encourage or help along the Jack White element. I have got uh, my Tender Octava. This is a clone of the uh, Electro Harmonics Pog, a pedal that uh, Jack White uses extensively. So, uh, <laughs> so that's definitely going to be used. Um, for his clean tone, he uses a MXR microamp, and the closest thing I have to one of those is this Joyo uh, Roll Boost, uh, which isn't a clone of the microamp per se, but it definitely has a similar kind of quality to the boost tone. So, I'm going to be using that for his clean tone, and for the classic muff tones, I've got my recently acquired Deluxe Big Muff, uh, which is awesome, by the way. Um, expect a demo of that soon. As well as, last but not least, a clone of the Bumble Buzz. Uh, more of a recent Jack White tone, really. Uh, more of his solo stuff has featured this effect. Um, but this is just a very loud, very spitty fuzz pedal. And as you can see, there are no knobs, no switches. It is literally just on or off. And it's a beast of a thing. Massive thanks to my friend Brian at Flock Effects for making this for me as a present. Bless your heart. I love this pedal. You hear that pedal a lot on the track over and over and over. Um, that's a really, really specific fuzz tone that he uh, uses that pedal for. So... I'm going to play through some tones now, and then I will just end the video. So I'll say goodbye now. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, take care. I will play us out. Bye.